1995 Iowa Boys State High School Basketball Tournament is brought to you in part by Norwest Bank Iowa to the nth degree. Gilbert 23 and 2 and all stage 23 and 2 for the 2A championship. Let's take a look at an outstanding player for Gilbert. You know they've got two players. They're averaging around 20 points a game in Althouse and BJ Tarone. But it's been the sophomore that's really been the surprise of this tournament. Carl Tarone. Yeah, you look at Carl Tarone. He has got some skills offensively. He's averaging double figures, but he's had an excellent tournament. But you can also look for his brother, B.J., to compliment him very well in this game. Carl, 34 points, eight three-pointers in the tournament. He has been red hot for Gilbert. Osage will look inside to the big guy, Adam Dahl. Adam Dahl, he's a honey of a player. I'll tell you, 6'6", six, six, inside. He can dominate. He does it both ways, rebounding and in scoring. Maybe one of the best big men in the tournament. Let's take a look at how these teams got to this point in their season to have the chance to play for the 2A championships. Gilbert lost only twice during the regular season, both times to Ogden, a team that wound up being top-rated, and then Gilbert on the tournament trail beat Ogden, and then this is how they got to Vets Auditorium. And obviously their close game was the semifinal versus Sioux Center, winning that by three points in overtime. And then you take a look at Osage. They had to go through Fort Dodge, Tri-Center, and then... Uh, Delhi, McCulloch Valley, and Tom Pesca, the coach there. That was really an upset as they got past Fort Dodge, St. Edmunds, and that's what propelled them on the road. As far as the team matchups, a couple of teams that put points on the board. Yes, they do, and I see nothing to change what we have seen in a couple other games today coming with this one. It's going to be which team ends up, I think, with a better half-court defense is going to be the winner because they can both put the points up there. Well, that was really the story in the 1A game, and it was Winfield Mount Union that had the great defensive effort, and that's why they're the 1A champs, and it's, as you say, very likely the same scenario will be written here in this 2A title game. As you mentioned, the Tigers have not been to state. The Green Devils have been to state three times, but only once since they won it all in 1923, and that was in 1992 when they lost in the first round. Green Devils coming off a half yesterday against Maquoketa Valley when they ran to a 47-19 lead that they call their best half of the year. Well, it's now time to meet the participants in the game. Father Craig Hollison. Memorial Auditorium in the 1995 Iowa High School Boys State Basketball Tournament. This is the championship game in Class 2A. It features the Tigers of Gilbert. And the Green Devils of Osage. Let's meet the non-starters and assistant coaches for both schools. For the Gilbert Tigers, number 11 is Curtis Turner. Number 31, Brian Rayfelt. Number 43, Kelsey Jacob. Number 13, Matt Sayer. Number 15, Doug Stevens. Number 25, Justin Schwartz. Number 35, Lance Law. Number 45, Ryan Smith. Number 41, Jeremy Franklin. Number 53, Bob Moore. The assistant coach of the Gilbert Tigers, Mr. Bob Torones. The Gilbert Tigers defeated Tri-Center Neola on Monday, 71-55, and Maquoketa Valley Delhi yesterday, 88-73, to move to the championship game. Here are the non-starters and assistant coaches for the Green Devils. Number 10, Nick 
Cockrum. Number 22, Ryan Friend. Number 52, Matt Lundy. Number 12, C.J. Fannin. Number 32, Josh Olson. Number 34, Tony Jennings. Number 40, Josh Hankey. Number 42, Jed Heeman. Number 44, Joe Knudsen. And number 54, Josh Eric. The assistant coaches of the Green Devils, Mr. Mark Mole, Mr. Dave Endicott, and Mr. B.J. Mayer. The Green Devils defeated Iowa City Regina Tuesday 64-49 and Sioux Center yesterday 58-55 to get into this final. And now, here are the starting lineups for the 23-2 Tigers of Gilbert and the 23-2 Green Devils of Osage. For the Tigers, at forward, a 6'4 senior, number 23, Eric Althau. For the Green Devils, at forward, a 6'2 senior, number 24, B.J. Fleming. For the Tigers, a 6'2 senior, number 55, Ryan Mullen. For the Green Devils, a 6'2 senior, number 30, John Fifth. At center, for the Tigers, a 6'5 senior, number 51, David Prochnow. For the Green Devils, a 6'6 senior, number 50, Adam Dahl. At guard for the Tigers, a 5'9 senior, number 21, B.J. Torones. At guard for the Green Devils, a 5'10 junior, number 14, Kevin Balsley. At guard for the Tigers, a 5'9 sophomore, number 33, Carl Torones. And at guard for the Green Devils, a 6'2 senior, number 20, Jace Bisgard. The head coach of the Gilbert Tigers, Mr. Dave Squires, and the head coach of the Osage Green Devils, Mr. Keith Mayer. Ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce the officials assigned to this contest by the Iowa High School Athletic Association. The referee, Mr. Randy Krejci of Cedar Rapids. The umpire, Mr. Everett Peterson of Cedar Rapids. And the bench official, Mr. Robert Oldis of Iowa City. And now, let's play basketball. Gilbert and Osage with a 2A championship. Gilbert, they don't always wear their hair like that, but they decided to celebrate their first trip to the state tournament by having each other cut each other's hair. No trained cosmetologist came up with that job. That was after they beat Grundy Center in the South State to go to state. And the opening tap controlled by the team wearing the green on St. Patrick's Day, the Osage Green Devils in their white uniforms tinted in green and black. B.J. Fleming tries to get in on the post and it's quickly taken away. And the lead feed goes to Altman and Eric Althaus, who is the leading scorer for the Tigers, gets them on the board, scant 15 seconds into the game. And it will be up-tempo pressure after the made basket. And then back to a zone, 3-2 zone. Facing down the rebound, B.J. Tarona, he and his brother, Carl team up in a 
guard spots, and they do a terrific job running that basketball team. A balance shot will go by B.J. Corona, and with the rebound, Adam Dahl. Well, as Coach Dave Squire said, they want to put it up quickly before they turn it over. And so far, it's a maximum of one pass at the offensive end. Interesting philosophy, isn't it? Yeah, if I were a player, it'd be fun. Dahl kicks it back outside to Jace Bisgard. And the rebound is chased down by Alta. Gilbert, just five miles from Ames, and as Dave Squire said earlier, that team sees a lot of Iowa State games, so they're not awed by a big arena. The rebound by Adam Dahl. Off the fingertips of the Green Devils, B.J. Fleming, and the ball belongs to the Tigers. Dave Squires, 29 years on the bench in high school basketball, and his counterpart, Keith Mayer, has been at Osage since 11 years, but had been at Lineville Cleo and Lost Nation prior to that. So two veterans on the sidelines in this championship game. Carl Carone working it inside, and the layup won't go by Ryan Mullen. So two minutes into the game, two points on the board thus far, and they belong to Gilbert. In the zone, packing it in, trying to keep the ball away from Adam Dahl. Perimeter passing by Osage, just unable to get it down. As Dahl handles it, draws lots of traffic. Biz guard and now Fleming. Fleming still trying to work it into Dahl, and with lots of black shirts around it, he misfires, but the Green Devils get another chance. D.J. Fleming ties the score at two. And he's the team's second leading scorer, getting him off to a good start. Pretty essential to try and open up the inside a bit. The Torones brothers play catch at the guard spot. That's the senior Torones trying to get it back outside, and it's intercepted by John Fifth. Each team with two, almost three minutes old. Lob for Dahl, hits the rim. Three on two break for the Tigers. All house taking it to the hole, and he's fouled by B.J. Fleming. To the free throw line, Eric Althaus. Althaus works on the top of that press and shows some ball handling skill. They're trying to take it to the basket. Althaus 6'4", weighs only 150, and Dave Squire says what you don't realize when you first see Eric Althaus, he's really a deceptively good rebounder. Normally, he's a good free throw shooter at 79%. Well, he's got long arms, so that rebounding comes from position as well as his height and the long arms, and that's why on top of the half-court zone, he can be very effective, making him throw long lob passes or early turnovers. Yeah. Or early turnovers against the Green Devils. And this is probably the lowest scoring game we've seen today. Just late into a game. Just 2-2. Two Procknow -two. misfires. The follow won't go. Procknow will try it again. And he is now over the back of Dahl who got the rebound. And so David Procknow with a foul for the Gilbert Tigers, and the team fouls are even at one. Opportunity knocks, not answered, and that time, a foul besides. Fisk guard against double coverage. Fisk helps them out. Here's Fleming. Nice dish to Dahl, and he is fouled. Dahl fouled by Proc now on the starting post for the Tigers with two very early fouls. Well, uh, that's what we saw in the last game of Pomeroy Palmer. Their post player, Mark Cordy, got two quick fouls, and it just changed the entire tempo and pace that Pomeroy wanted to play. See what happens now for Gilbert. He's and with two fouls, he will leave. Yeah, he's going to have to sit down for a while. And if there's any part of uh, the game Adam Dahl really needs to work on, obviously, is that free throw shooting. When we start looking at 59%. Brian Rayfeld replacing Proc now in the Gilbert lineup. Dahl nails both free throws to give Osage a 4-2 lead. Foul against Bisgard. 
his guard on the over guard. Picks up a foul. And the Tigers trailing by two. Look to even things up. This one tries to crash the board. And he falls an offensive foul. Ryan Mullen with his foul. His first, the Tigers already have three. Those age a two-point lead and a slow offensive start to the game. As bringing it ahead will be Jace Bisgard, the senior guard. Stands 6'2", weighs 150, works along with Kevin Balsley in the backcourt for Osage. The lob for Fisk is too long. Five turnovers early against the Green Devils. And a little soft pressure that time, little 2-1-2 two -two zone. And successful turnover. Timeout, 4-0-6, left in the first. Score, 4-2. Osage over Gilbert will be back at Vets Auditorium after this word from your local station. Nerves early in the 2A championship game. Osage guilty of five turnovers in the first four minutes. And Gilbert having trouble getting shots to go down there. One of eight. Ray Felt. Checked by Dahl. Shooting cold early. And you see the shooting percentage. Both teams having a devil of a time. Even though that's Osage's mascot. Score even at four, take away by Eric Altout. The pull up by BJ Colonel. Gilbert into the lead at six to four. Tarones averages 9.4. Dave Gilbert calls those Tarones brothers fire and ice. He says the ice guy, though, is actually the fresh, the sophomore Carl. He's been the cooler customer down here at State. The three try won't go by Bisgard. The follow is there by Fitz. Scores even at six. Carl Tarone on the miss. This is Bowlesley feeding Dahl. Offensive foul. No bucket. Adam Dahl, his first foul. And that is seven turnovers in the first five minutes. And a good choice for the three on two, but you've got to be able to catch the ball in traffic and be able to be in balance. You can see the official waving it off right away. Nick Cockrum, number 10, is coming to the lineup for Osage. And we get another look at that earlier block. Now Cockrum has just come in, picked up Tarone. Carl Tarone. He's really had a hot tournament, but he's missed two early in this ball game. So at this point, Gilbert can't shoot it. Osage can't hang on. And both teams got to feel good because they're going through these early problems and they're still dead even. Yeah. And so one of those, whichever one is less ugly, can get the lead. Makra. Now Fleming. Gilbert's Cockrum. just very disruptive to the Osage offense. You can tell the, the tempo that Gilbert forces Osage into is not something they like. Loving trying to force it inside the fifth. And up by B.J. Tarone. Gilbert to a two-point lead at 8-6. to six. I'll tell you, you look out there, you look at Gilbert, with all those shaved heads, they look like torpedoes running around. <laughs> And that's the way that Osage must feel about the way they've come after him. Cockrum open, and the 5'8 guard misfires. The rebound taken down by Ryan Mullen. Ahead all out. Nice speed for B.J. Corona. Again, Gilbert using their half-court trap, going towards the ball, looking for a double team. They can't get the trap. They just retreat. Keeping the ball in front of him. Cockrum on the point, trying to get some penetration. Now Fleming will try and rebounded by Althaus. BJ Tarunin pulls up for a three. Gilbert basketball. 
Adam Dahl back into the lineup for Keith Mayer's Osage team. Leaving will be fifth guard. Also leaving will be John Fisk. And along the back line, Keith Kevin Balsley checks back in. Gilbert does get up some shots. They've gotten up 15 of them already in the first quarter. Nine. When in doubt, shoot. That is the Dave Squires philosophy. Althaus with three first quarter buckets. Cochran dishes for Matt Lundy, who just came in. Dial puts in the follow, and he is fouled by Rayfeld. Dahl with his first basket here in the final minute of the first quarter. Well, if his teammates can't get him involved, he's going to get himself involved by going to the glass, getting that rebound and the putback. Now the opportunity again to go to the line. Made his first two. Dahl two times, first team all-conference, averaging 21 and a half points and 12.9 rebounds. Has five in the quarter, and it's a 12 to nine lead by Gilbert. The Tigers with the lead. The final 30 seconds of the first quarter. Nice interior feed. The shot won't go, though, for Rayfeld. It'd be interesting if they know what the clock is, because I was a little surprised Gilbert put it up. But again, as Coach had said, well, we're not going to keep it too long. We don't want to give it back to the other team without at least a scoring opportunity. Green Devils looking for the last shot of the quarter. It's hit by by Dahl after the miss by Bowles, and he won't go. And a low scoring first period. Gilbert with the lead at the end of the quarter. That's the end of the first quarter. It's Gilbert 12 and Osage 9. We'll be back at Veterans Auditorium in just a moment. Welcome back to Beth Gilbert leading Osage 12 to 9. Another of our high V helpful smile salutes tonight. With me is Dr. Lynn Nelson, one of the doctors that helps take care of these kids. You don't have a bad seat, but you're working as well. No, it's a great seat. Fortunately, no injuries tonight, but it's nice to be here and provide coverage. Des Moines Orthopedic Surgeons, about seven of you said that work throughout the week of the tournament? That's right. Seven of us uh, cover the tournament, 12-person group, and everybody pushes in to help. Congratulations uh, for your help here and the $50 gift certificate from hy V for being uh, this quarter's helpful smile salute winner. Let's go back upstairs. That's great. Gilbert with the ball and a three-point lead as the second period begins. Althouse being covered by Fleming. Peroni trying to get it inside to Proc now, but throws it too tall for him. Open is Balsley. Balsley ties the score at 12 by nailing a tray. And now Osage comes to life as the second period begins. Now we're starting to get a bit of a flow into the game as to what the teams could accomplish after the quarter. Discussed it a little bit, how to attack the press. Hockham comes down the lane, and he travels. A hop, a skip, a jump, and nine turnovers. Nine, Larry. That is a bunch. That is way too many in the mind of Keith Mayer, the head coach of the Green Devils. I mean, generally you're going to end up around probably 12, 13 a game, 14 a game. But uh, you're well on your way with nine. The Toronaces play the guards inside. Procno plays with two fouls. Also the lineup, Mullen and Altel. The Dave Squires got his starters in. The pull up by Althaus, the rebound taken down by Fleming. Fleming spots Dahl underneath. Nice look by Fleming. And Dahl with the left hand. That is his natural hand right there. A steal, take away. Nick Cochran, the sophomore point guard, on the point for the Green Devils, throwing it away, and the turnover will be the 10th against the Green Devils. So they lead by two, but they have squandered opportunity. Well, Keith Mayer may subscribe to uh, Coach Dave Squire's philosophy. Just put it up. Let's at least get it on the rim. So they makes it an entertaining fans game. 
Ball's house watched by Fleming. Terone puts it to the floor against Ballsley. Off the baseline, Pock now, and the rebound chased by Fleming. Underneath, fifth gathers and misses. Dahl rebounds and is fouled by Pock now, and that will be his third. And he hasn't even broken a sweat tonight. The only time he really got to get loose was warm-ups. So the starting center for the Gilbert Tigers has three early fouls. Difficult situation takes you out of your game individually as well as hurting the team. Kelsey Jacob replaces them, a two-inch height loss when Jacob replaces Proc now for the Tigers. Open, B.J. Fleming. Osage runs to their biggest lead, 17-12. And with a foul, Kevin Balsley. Five and a half left in this first half. Dave Squires asking his team to try to play with a bit of composure, something that they have not done recently. Sends Ryan Mullen back into the lineup. And checking out will be Brian Rayfeld. Backing in Mullen over Dahl. Gets the roll, Ryan Mullen. Osage with the ball and a three-point lead. Nice job of Bosley controlling it. I don't know how he saved it, Mac, but he did. Well, that's a half a turnover. They somehow saved it and got it to the backcourt. And Fleming gets it down, coming off the pick of fifth. Fleming's had a couple nice opportunities to go to the basket. Perone fouled as he tries to put it up in traffic by John Fisk. And so the sophomore guard, Carl Terones, will go to the line. Trying to have an opportunity to put it off the glass, unable to do so. As now Terones, and this is Carl, going to the line. Carlos Sage, four or five this quarter. Guard change by Keith Mayer. Bisgard is in. Cockrum is out. Carl Terones with his first point. And Gilbert's really been outscored over the last uh, six, seven minutes. Nineteen sixteen. Osage has got the lead. Four forty-nine in the second period. Dahl, good job to find the open man underneath, and then Fisk doesn't get it to go down. Allhouse attacks the basket. Fisk runs down the rebound. Bisgard looking inside for Dahl, who went to kick it right back out to Fleming. Fleming's got the hot hand, and the Green Devils are finding the guy with the hot hand. That was a deflection pass, but got to the right guy. Jose John to recognize he is getting the hot hand, as you had said, and Fleming needs to have some more touches. At the other end, Fleming with a foul. Carl Terone, a 69% free throw shooter. And Terone, a moment ago, not two down. However, the common foul and inbounding it will be Kelsey Jacob. At first, we've got a timeout with 3.59. Left in the second quarter, the score of State 21 and Gilbert 16. We'll be back at Veterans Auditorium after this word from your local station. Midway through the second quarter, a low-scoring game by two teams who normally put a lot of points on the board at those age 21 and Gilbert 16. A lot of it right there is the shooting percentage. Not going to put a lot of points at 33 and 42. And then the turnovers. You can't hang on to it. You can't shoot it. And the turnaround by Kelsey Jacob makes it a three-point lead for Osage at 21 to 18. Jacob with his first two. Fleming, right there, he is still red hot. 10 points in the period, 12 points in the game for B.J. Fleming. 
Carl Taroni tries to answer, and the rebound is taken down by Biscard. By Fleming is suddenly turned on fire. I mean, pass too hard for Lundy. And the bounces going Osage way. The lucky green helping him right now. The six point lead, Osage, their biggest. Fleming. Who's the human? Finally misses one, but Lundy puts it right back through. Matt Lundy, the 6'5 junior, scores for the Green Devils, and they open up an eight point lead. There are seven of their last nine, including three threes. Fleming being guarded by Carone, Carl Carones, and away from the ball, three second violation spotted. And so the three second call will give the ball to the Gilbert Tigers. Adam Dahl comes back on for Osage, their leading scorer and rebounder on the season. He's got seven points in this one. And also back in is Nick Cochran. Cochran replaces Ballsley at the point for the Green Devils. The pace is furious up and down. People losing track of the, the game that way. But not much scoring still going on. In the middle, the fall away is short by Jacob. This guard with the miss, Dahl with the offensive rebound. Dahl will try it again, and this time he is fouled. Ryan Mullen on his second foul. He fouls even at six with 2.13 left to play in the second quarter. Dahl with his height advantage, able to reach over the back as he did. A little push underneath. Foul. Both teams in the penalty on their next foul. Dahl with the height advantage. Takes advantage of it to score his ninth point. That's a 22 to six run by Osage. And the rejection by the Dahl. Dahl running the floor well, so is Fleming. Fleming on the drive, gets the roll. And it was that 24 to six on this run. Gilbert says, let's take a look at this again. We've got a timeout with 150 left in the first half of the score. Oh, stage 30 and Gilbert 18. We'll be back at Veterans Auditorium in just a moment. Osage has outscored Gilbert 21 to 9 in this quarter. They have run nine points in a row, and the cold shooting has hampered Gilbert. Well, Osage has overcome their early turnover problem. And you've had Osage. So that point, really pushing it up. Osage 9 of 14, and 3 of 4 from the arc. And the rebounding has gone nine to two in favor of Osage. Dahl on the feet for Cleveland. Eleven for Dahl, fifteen for Fleming. They lead the way for Osage. Well, right now, Gilbert has to find a defensive answer, and he's not going to be an offensive answer. Tarone for two in a row. Got Carl Tarone, two in a row. Tarone has seven points in this period. Go to the final minute of the second quarter. Dahl wants to take it down the pipe, knocked out of bounds. The Tigers. Kevin Bosley comes back on for the Green Devils. He wears number 14. And Kelsey Jacobs, number 43, comes into the Gilbert lineup. His guard on the penetration finds Cockrum. Cockrum over the zone. Dahl with a rebound. Fifth with a foul. Second foul on fifth with 39 seconds left in the second quarter. Gilbert down 32-23, but an opportunity to cut into the Green Devils' lead. Jed Heman, a 6-1 sophomore, comes on for Osage. With two fouls, John Smith will lead. It squires on the Gilbert bench. He's seen his team try to claw back in it after a moment ago. He got scored nine unanswered points. Old Housen 
79% free throw shooter, it's his first two. Eight for all house, and it's a 32-25 game, so Gilbert fighting their way back into this one. Oh, we knew there'd be runs, too many offensive weapons out there. It's been a game, as we've indicated, who can play defense. Is still going to be the team that's going to be able to win this championship. And now Gilbert goes back to their zone. Here we have a little discussion there. It looks like a three-second violation. That is the second lane. time that Osage has been called for a three-second violation, something you really don't see called in basketball much anymore. Well, when you stand in there, they're going to call it. I mean, you got to get out of there sometime. So Gilbert, now down by only seven, a chance to get right back in it as they play it for the last shot. Althaus wants to take it at the hole. He does. But Gilbert's just got to cut down the turnovers. I mean, it'll say, uh, they have 12. And so, after Osage and Gilbert on the ropes, the Tigers come roaring back and make it a five-point game at the half. Our halftime score at the end of the first half, Osage 32 and Gilbert 27, and we'll be back at Veterans Auditorium in just a moment. 12-point lead, but then Gilbert finished with a flurry to pull back to within five as we're at halftime of the 2A championship game. Osage 32, Gilbert 27. Mac, let's take a look at first half highlights. Then at the other end, got to go ahead and see once again Gilbert getting it out on a little break. This is the Gilbert Gunner, B.J. Terones getting it down. Once again, Terones on the lob, up, and the finish. And at the other end is also a highlight as the bomber, Beasley from outside, gets it to go down. Once again, looking underneath. Nice backdoor cut. Dahl with the cute little left hand getting it in. Great pass there by Fleming to set it up. Now Fleming from the outside. Boy, he got hot late in the yeah, quarter. That was the Fleming fling from Osage. You said that right, and here he is one more time. B.J. Fleming, a 13-point second period to lead Osage to a 32-27 halftime lead over Gilbert. We'll be back with the start of the second half in just a moment. Ken Seaman back at Veterans Auditorium, where Osage leads Gilbert by a score of 32 to 27. Mac, in talking to Dave Squires yesterday, he said he felt rebounding was the key. When we take a look at the first half statistics, we'll see that his worries have been borne out by Osage. I'll tell you, I don't know if I recall, if you look at the last two lines, a game as strange as this, when you say somebody was out-rebounded 16 rebounds and a half, yet they created eight more turnovers and the game is just a five-point difference. Very unusual statistic. It really is strange. Osage with just one more bucket. We take a look at the individual scoring leaders. Aldhouse leading the way for Gilbert with 10. Fleming Dahl, a good one-two punch for Osage. Yeah, Aldhouse, this is his house today. And uh, Fleming and Dahl, they are doing a one-two, two-one, and getting it done nicely, 25 points between them. Unranked Gilbert making their first trip to the state basketball tournament. They found themselves in the championship game, trailing Osage by five. Osage, trip number three, won it to get things started. The first tournament ever held in boys basketball back in 1923. In those days, they had a national tournament, and led by a Hall of Famer, Buzz Hogan, they won three out of four in the national tournament. Imagine if we did that these days, yeah. the national tournament after these state tournaments. I'll tell you, they'd be playing until June. It'd almost they be would. like an NBA season. Yeah, it would. And speaking of NBA, at least they play. Where's baseball? That's true. No question about that. We're getting nice weather and still no major leaguers in camp. 32-27 on stage over Gilbert as we get ready for the final 16 minutes, at least in regulation of the 2A championship game. If you're just tuning in, the 1A championship won by Winfield Mount Union, 64-46 over Pomeroy Palmer. By the way, the 2 8 consolation game today, the Coconut Valley, 54, and Sioux Center, 48. That was the game in which we had a 10 minute delay because the lights went out on the east side of Des Moines, darkening Veterans Auditorium for a couple of minutes. 
And where were you when the lights went out? Huh? I was next to you getting ready for our telecast. And now let's talk about what's going on at Carver Hawkeye Arena, where Iowa well on their way through 190 pounds to capture another national championship. If they do it, and they certainly look like they will, Dan Gable will have 13 national titles in 19 years. Well, I think that's what, four of the last uh, five years. You got it. Fifth trying to get Osage started, and the rebound taken down by Mullen. Both teams back to their starters. Tarone takes it right to the hole, and Ball plucks off the rebound, and a foul call from behind against P.J. Tarone. So both teams trying to make a statement to begin the third quarter, and neither team is on the board. Kind of how the uh, first half started, up and down for about four minutes with uh, just a couple points scored by each team. Open is Kevin Ballsley. Ballsley now with a three in both the second and third periods, and Osage stretches the lead to 35-27. Is Bowen taking it to the well? Six-point lead for the Osage Green Devils. They wound up tied with Lake Mills for the North Iowa Conference Championship. On the foul, Paul Tarone. Tarone's with his first. The only player with more than two fouls is the starting center for the Tigers. David Procknow has got three. Just underway third period. Fleming over Althau. And it belongs to Gilbert. And the ball rolls away to the outhouse, almost. <laughs> One thing you ought to notice, as B.J. brings it up the floor, the red sneakers worn by the Toronis brothers. Dave Squires just shrugs his shoulders. He says, I don't care what they wear on their feet, as long as they score the way they have. Dull with a rebound. Okay, they both got quick hands. Foul of Carl Toronis in not, second. Not quick enough that time with the hands or the feet. Grab the little arm. Looking down, link to the court, good outlet pass. You can see the angle to the wing, and then you bring it into the glass. That's a very good pass, very good outlet. It's very difficult to throw the ball from the middle of the court to the middle of the court. Outlet man gave him an angle. Junior guard Kevin Bowley misses on his first free throw try. Bowley and Biscard, two starters who started last year for Osage. Working against fifth. Mullen getting around Bisgard to score. And it's the other end. The quick shot good by Fleming. Fleming just having an outstanding ball game. He's now got 17. The follow shot won't go by Proc now. Strapping for the rebound doll. I'll tell you, when it's not going right sometimes, it is not going right. Procknow picks up foul number four. And I don't think Procknow has five minutes in this game. A very frustrating night for David Procknow. Had two fouls before the game was three minutes old. He now is on the bench with four until 5.56 to go in the third quarter. Fleming penetrates with a pass to fifth. Oh, beautiful. Good look. Angle in the zone, went against the grain. A moment ago, Gilbert makes the run, pulls it within five, and then Osage back-to-back -back buckets to build the lead back to nine. Althaus has it blocked. Dahl picks it out of the air. Balsley drives baseline, and then Dahl comes up with it. Foul whistled against Rayfeld. It's his second foul, and it's the 15th foul against Gilbert. 
Osage has not been whistled for a foul. Dave Squires wants to talk to his basketball team. Gilbert uses a timeout. 5-16 left in the third quarter. Osage with a nine-point lead to score Osage 40, Gilbert 31. We'll be back at Veterans Auditorium in just a moment. On St. Patrick's Day, the team Clinton Green, the Green Devils from Osage, enjoy a nine-point lead, 5-16 to go third period. Fleming, skip pass over the zone. Shot won't go by Discard. Ball knocks it down. Lee feet Fleming. 18 for DJ Fleming. Big night for BJ. Gilbert, with the ability to score points in bunches, needs to do that to mount a comeback. Carl Perona, nine points. Ball has it knocked out of his hands by Gilbert, and it will be Osage basketball. Keith Mayer has not had a team win a state championship took the team here in 92. Had a daughter play on a basketball team at Osage that won a girls championship, so he's experienced as a parent. He would like to experience it as a coach. And B.J. Fleming is helping make that dream come true as he now gives Osage their biggest lead. Taking it to the hole, Ray felt the follow will go by Mullen, and the rebound is cleared by Dahl. Rayfelt, the left out of bounds. Number 10, Cockrum, number 52, Lundy, come in for Osage. Ball, Bosley, and Dahl will leave. He was getting a little tired, coming up and down the court, pace a little quick. Just maybe a minute. Midway through the third quarter, the shot from the corner by Bisgard. B.J. Tarona. Now Mullen. And the rebound played by Matt Lundy. Lundy, a 6'5 junior, good height off the bench for Keith Mayer. He's gotten a couple of key rebounds in this one. So when you look at old stage, the height they've got, Probably as good as any team we've seen all day, including the 4A school. Tarone takes it in deep after starting the play with a steal. And he's got six points. And Gilbert back to within nine. Hoffman fouled by Tarone. B.J. Tarone, his second. 16 foul against Gilbert. No fouls called on Osage in the second half. Dahl replaces Lundy in the lineup for Osage. And into the lineup for Gilbert will be Justin Schwartz, number 25, a 60 sophomore. Timeout with 3.01 left in the third. It's Osage 44, Gilbert 35. We'll be back at Veterans Auditorium after this word from your local station. Game was tied up three times in the first quarter, once early in the second quarter, and then Osage has taken the lead. They've led by as many as 12. Their current lead is 9, 2.57 to go in the third period. Dahl takes it to the middle of the court and scores it. First point to the second half for Adam Dahl. Tarone doesn't get the roll. Dahl out left to Fleming. the foul, Ryan Mullen. And the foul is really mounting up. Gilbert, seven of them. Penetration. And the penetration allowed because of the good shooting performance by Fleming. Respect by Gilbert. Try and shut it down. He is the opportunity. Now, by Bisgard to try and score. As we talk, foul situation. Seven by Gilbert. Okay, come on. 
the bagel still held by Oso. Did that mean zero? That means a zero. Six for Fisk of a 232 to go in the third period. It's a 48-35 Osage lead. That is their biggest advantage. Althaus being replaced by Kelsey Jacobs. So check that Althaus remains in. He'll put it up and score it. First point to the second half for Eric Althaus. Althaus having a nice night. Does not really force the game. Brings it. That kind of good choice. Trying to get his team a couple quick baskets with the turnover. Third foul against Fitz. Getting fouled from behind. He got man a little bit. And the free throw shooter, Eric Altel. Althaus, a 6'4 senior, has put in some good seasons for Gilbert. Gilbert was a team that last year thought they might make it to state. They had seven seniors on that ball club. They thought they actually, and Dave Squires was even saying, had maybe a better chance last year. But lost to Ballard on the road to state. This year, a team they thought maybe not quite as talented, but they have come further. They've come to the championship game, and they're within nine with 2.05 to go in the third quarter. Fleming pulls up. Jacob rebounds, and he is fouled by Cochran. <laughs> Jace Bisgard back in for Osage. The 6'2 senior guard has not scored in this ballgame. Cerrone tries to bring it down, and a foul is called against Bisgard, who just ran into the screen. Got to have some help from your teammate. Let him know the screener is there. From the free throw line, the shot won't go by Corona. And with 1.44 to go in the third period, Osage with the ball and a chance to once again take a double-figure lead. Gilbert once again getting up a lot of shots. Five of 17 in the quarter by Osage, shooting 60%, six of 10. So Gilbert gets them up, they just don't get them down. A lot of off-balance shots. Fleming has it taken away, gets it right back, takes it to the hole and scores it. D.J. Fleming now with 22 points. Late in the third period, Gilbert just hanging around. Osage is really at the advantage, but Mullen scores six points in the quarter, ten points in the game, and certainly Gilbert not fading there, sticking in there, back to within nine. That's getting repetitive, but once again, Gilbert has to learn to find a way to stop those things because he won't be able to continue to outscore him. Gilbert gives up too many easy scoring opportunities. Althouse with his first foul. Osage is not on the season a good free throw shooting team, just 58%. Now they've been shooting it at a better level than that tonight. But that could come to help Gilbert down the stretch to get back in the ball game. Fisk with the save. Dahl shovels ahead to Fleming. It's 24 for B.J. Fleming. Just when Gilbert has an opportunity, rush shot. And a couple turnovers, and Osage is right there. Fleming, all kinds of difficulty on that attempt. Now Bisgard handles for Osage. And they will play for the last shot. Down to 20 seconds, so you know, once again, Balsley is going to look to try and uh, control the ball. Fleming with the ball now has been the hottest Green Devil in this one. Fisk is fouled. He got chopped across the arm by B.J. Toronto. his third foul. 
Two and a half seconds left in the third quarter. John Fisk, a 6'2 senior, has been a good rebounder in this tournament at the free throw line. Fisk, 17 rebounds in the first two games. Jed Heeman coming into the lineup for Osage. And that's the end of the third quarter. Eight minutes left in regulation in this championship game. And that's the end of the third quarter with the score Osage 52 and Gilbert 41. We'll be back at Veterans Auditorium in just a moment. gift certificate for helping us out here with your friendly <laughs> smile. Well, I think maybe we'll find somebody to give that to. Thank you, Tim. Let's go back upstairs. <laughs> back and I'll split it. Yeah, come on now. <laughs> nice thought, though, by Don Euchre. Very nice man. Yeah. Final quarter underway. Osage, 52. Gilbert, 41. Baldwin makes the penetration. Very rarely shoots it. He'll make the penetration and likes to kick it back. Well, he draws the defense, he knows where the spot-up shooters are, and he's had a couple of them get a little hot tonight, Fleming being one of them. Dahl. And Dahl with 15 points. And Osage once again builds the lead to 13, equaling their biggest advantage in the game. Altout off the pick by McMullen. Another Mullen scores, and for Eric Altout, 15 points. Well, he said he's really had a nice game. He's allowed the game to come to him, taking some good shots. Take away by Crocknell. Crocknell back in with four fouls as this fourth quarter begins. Carl Tarone. Rebound taken down by Baldwin. And Ed Fleming can't hang on. Fourth foul on Tarone. Fourth foul on Tarone. Fourth foul on Tarone. Fleming was mishandling that ball all the way down the court. Looked like he wasn't able to regrip and try and score. A little foul help. Puts him on the line. Loving a 62% free throw shooter, and again, Osage is a team 58%. 25 for B.J. Fleming. He got 21 against Tri Center Neola in the quarterfinals, and he came back and got just eight. Was in foul trouble yesterday, but he had more than made up for that tonight. Well, you're looking at a team, as you had indicated, shooting 58% tonight, shooting over. 70%, 8 of 11. Lundy replaces Fisk in the Green Devil attack. Uh, it's about time for uh, Gilbert to make some good offensive decisions. Otherwise, they're going to have trouble down the stretch. Down 13, six and a half minutes to go. And he stops at the other end. That's what they've got to do to get back in it. And the turnover against Osage will give Gilbert an opportunity to cut the 13-point Osage lead. Gilbert has spent most of the game playing from behind after the game was tied up early in the second quarter. Dave Squires calls the timeout. Six minutes, 23 seconds. Left in regulation, the score. Osage 56, Gilbert 43. We'll be back at Veterans Auditorium in just a moment. It's Osage 56, Gilbert 43 in the 2A championship game. Let's take a look at our Norwest Bank key set. If you look at rebounds, that is just an unbelievable difference. But Gilbert did pick up seven in that third quarter, but it'll stay a total of 37 and shooting well. If you look at that, it's surprising that the 
margin isn't even greater than 13 points. Yeah, it really is. That, you're right. That's an overwhelming figure. And again, that's what Dave Squire said. If his team had a weakness, it was that he felt that rebounding would really be a key. It's almost non-existent uh, as far as being able to create something off the rebound, such as scoring on your missed shot. Going for the takeaway, Ballsley commits the second foul. The kick out. We talked. house having opportunities to score. At times trying to drive it. That had his arm grab along the way. They had to give it back to it. And they did. Still only the fourth team foul against those eight. Ten have been whistled against Gilbert. Ryan Fleming fouled on the way in by Mullen. Fourth foul on Ryan Mullen. He and Proc now, the two big guys for the Gilbert Tigers, each with four fouls. And B.J. Fleming, the 6,260-pound senior, has really elevated his game tonight. He comes in averaging 14. He's got 26. Rayfeld back in for Gilbert, replacing Mullen. And again, we've talked about poor free throw shooter for a state but tonight. Championship night. Looks like, hey, let's change that a little bit. And Fleming, just a 62% free throw shooter himself, having a good night at the line. That's like 9 for 12 now, 75%. That's a good percentage. Yeah, it really is. Any team will take that. Fleming has hit 4 or 5. He's got 28 points. Biggest lead of the game by Osage. The Kalonis brothers play catch. A lot of movement on the outside, but no shooting opportunities, no scoring opportunities. DJ leaves it short, out of bounds, off the fingertips of Mullen. Rather a clock now. And so, it is Osage ball, they lead by 15. 5-17 to go in the 2A championship game. The 1A title claimed by Winfield Mount Union with a 64-46 win over Pomeroy Palmer. And two more championship games to be played tomorrow. 3A, Johnson will try to claim their 50th straight win and win their second consecutive 3A title against MOC Floyd Valley. And then that will be followed by the Valley Ankeny game, which will be the third time the teams have played this year Ankeny with two two-point victories. 17 turnovers by Osage. Like I say, statistically, you can't figure this game out when you look at it, try to break it down. What it's been is exciting from the fan standpoint. It's just not uh, masterfully played. Trying to pick and roll. Gilbert Dahl with the block. And it's put in by Eric Altau. Okay, somehow he finds a way to get the ball to meet the net. 18 points. Four minutes, 30 seconds remain in the 2A championship game. Ball's lay all the way. Nice drive. And he's played that drive all night long with a little head fake. Raising the defender up that time with the fake instead of ball reversal. He just drove a gap. Clock now on the miss. Fifth on the rebound. Fleming finds Dahl at the high post. Kicks it back out to Fleming. Three. Well, about now, you can put it in the old cooker. Uh, you can call this one probably done. 63-45. As Osage has built the lead to 18 points. Much of it on the strength of a 31-point effort by B.J. Fleming. The Green Devils will call a timeout with exactly 3.30 to go. Osage builds the lead to 18 points at 63 to 45 for the Green Devils. 
Only two losses this year to Lake Mills in the Forest City. Came back to beat Lake Mills in the district. Kevin Mayer, 245. They may have three timeouts if they need them. That's what the coach says. But at this point, Leading at 63-45, it's beginning to look like they might not need them. I think they can put those uh, timeouts in their hip pocket, take them home, save them for next year, because it looks like uh, Keith Mayer is going to need a little help in taking the trophy home and maybe need some help in finding a throat locker. <laughs> you said that right. Bosley and Biscard along the back line up front, Fleming, Fisk, and Lundy. That's Only Gall out of there among the starters right now for OC. For the first time tonight, you may see a little delay. Well, I'll take that back, no delay. And Osage has made eight of their last 10 and made five in a row until that last layup miss. Curtis Turner has come in, number 11 for Gilbert at the timeout. Trying to put it up to Alt House, and he gets fouled by Balsley. One thing that Osage does not want to do now is foul and send Gilbert to the foul line. Without time running off the clock, they don't want them to see add to their point total. Now it's 18 points for Eric Altel. Well, the free throw shooting for two teams that really didn't burn the nets have done pretty well tonight. As that now becomes eight of nine for Gilbert, and of course Osage, moving it up near 80% tonight. Somebody asked Keith Mayer today if Osage's other state championship, which was the first time they gave one back in 1923, if that trophy were still in the case, he said they didn't get trophies in those days. It was merely a plaque. On the foul, Matt Lundy. Two thirty-six left. Osage still not in the penalty. That was just their sixteenth foul. Coming on for Osage number twenty-two is Ryan Friend, leaving B.J. Fleming thirty-one points for Fleming. Outstanding offensive performance, very efficient. Just hit the shots that were there. Dahl, nice quick look into Friend. The lob intended for Proc now intercepted by Osage. So we go down to the 205 mark with Osage about to win their second state championship. Fifth. Makes it a 20 point game. Adam Dahl. Looks like Adam Dahl was saying circle the wagon. So Gilbert making their first trip to the state tournament won't go away with the state championship, but they did work into the final game. And a couple of fouls underneath the basket. Just one of them called. And it was called against Kelsey Jacob. Jacob will now leave the lineup. Jeremy Franklin, number 41, comes on for the Gilbert Tigers. And one by one, Keith Mayer removing his starters as he takes John Fisk out of the lineup. And the traffic jam begins outside Betts Auditorium as many of the neutral fans head out Osage and Gilbert fans staying to the last second. Certainly honor their team after the game with the trophy presentation. You had suggested at the start 
on St. Patrick's Day, it might be difficult to beat a team dressed in green, nicknamed the Green Devils. Well, you were right. Well, this afternoon we saw Coach Ireland dressed in green for Ankeny. And he won. And he won. And he won big. 17 for Dahl. Bob Bourne, number 53, is coming to the lineup for Gilbert. For stage, Matt Lundy comes in. And Adam Dahl gets his curtain call. 17 points for Adam Dahl. No question about it. He's destined for a spot on the all-tournament team that Mac McCausen will be announcing following our game tonight. Bob Moore puts it in. Bob Moore, just recently back, his family had been in Pakistan for a number of years after he grew up in Gilbert. On the baseline, the shot won't go by Heeman. Lundy keeping it alive. He'll take it back to the hole. Now Heeman will try it again. A Jennings fight for it. The rebounding is just unbelievable. It really is. There's no question where this game was won. Franklin with a foul. An overwhelming rebound edge for Osei. 45 to 22. Wow. Those are unofficial stats, but I'm sure they're very accurate. Oh, Dick McDonald's keeping them. I would wager they are maybe more official than the official stats. He's I that would, good. I would think so. Glad to be working with Dick McDonald during this Boys State basketball tournament. Doesn't miss a turnover. He may have a turnover every now and then. <laughs> Into the final minute of the 2A championship game. Tony Jennings at the line for Osage. So the Green Devils will finish 24 and 2. And the Tigers of Gilbert will finish at 23 and 3. Remember, we're on the air with the 3A and 4A championship tomorrow beginning at 6.30. I hope you will join us then for what I think will be two very good matchups. MOC Floyd Valley against Johnson. Johnson, of course, the favorite there. They've not lost a game in two years. They've been number one all season long. And then Ankeny and Valley in an all Polk County and all Central Iowa Metro League championship game, a replay of the 93 game won by Valley. Well, you're going to tell me who you think is going to win the uh, 4A? What do you think, Clay? Nope. I'm not, gonna tell. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't want to play correct. I think it'll be a great contest. I really do. Don't you? When they play uh, two two-point games. Uh, I, I like both teams. I like their style. Uh, it's obviously, I think, which, game, or which team can set the tempo they want to play. That way, we'll definitely keep a lower scoring. Don't know if like. No starters are left on the floor, but the guys who are out there are getting a chance in a state tournament game, and for Osage, a state championship win. And there's the mayor, Coach Mayor. Mayor, who returned to his alma mater, grew up at Osage, graduated the high school, went to Northern Iowa, came back as a coach in 84. He says, good job, as Josh Hankey and C.J. Fannin walk past him. He's able to empty his bench tonight in this win over Gilbert, the 2A championship game. Ryan Flaw at the free throw line for the Tigers. Dave Squire is telling us last night he had a long career and he said if he never got to a state championship tournament, a state tournament, he said you know, he could have accepted that because he's enjoyed coaching so much. But he said, now that he's been here once, he had a great time. He says, I want to come back. Law well, knocks them both down, but it's way too late. It 
was a five-point game at the half. The second half belongs to Keith Mayer's Osage Green Devils. That's the end of the game with the final score. Osage 71, Gilbert 53. We'll be back after a word from your local station. Osage claims the 2A championship with a 71-53 win over Gilbert. Down to Mo Kelly. To present the trophies to these two class 2A teams, also medals for the players and cheerleaders, two members of the Board of Control of the Iowa High School Athletic Association. To my far right is the current chairperson of the board, representing the Iowa Association of School Boards, Arlo Flaggy of Waverly. And next to Mr. Flaggy is the superintendent, Gilbert Schools, Doug Williams. <laughs> Tigers, Tigers and Green Devils, haven't we had a great week here? Our runner-up, our runner-up completing a tremendous season and to cap it all off, their first trip ever to the state tournament, and what a great year, week, week they've had. If they'd come forward now to receive their trophy and medals, Coach Dave Squires and the Tigers from Gilbert. Association, Carolyn Gage. This award is presented by the Iowa High School Athletic Association, the Iowa Newspaper Association, the Iowa Broadcasters Association, and Norwest. Quality education is measured not only in the athletic program, the student pupil ratio, the student teacher ratio, the number of science programs, the number of fine arts programs is also measured in sportsmanship. And that is something that is very rare. And it's with a great pleasure that I present this to Sue Center. from Norwest Bank, two $500 scholarships. One, they will choose a male athlete or cheerleader, and the other will be presented to a female athlete or cheerleader of the school's choosing. The Iowa Bankers Association in recent years has presented a Student Athlete Achievers Award. All of the eight teams in this particular class nominated one of their players to be in the running for this particular award. It's a $500 scholarship award. It's based primarily on their academic achievements, their community and church involvement, as well as their athletic achievements. Our winner, a very excellent student, 
3.8 GPA, 27 ACT, involved in the music program, both vocally and instrumentally, involved in athletics, cross-country, track, and basketball, very involved in church work, doing a lot of umpiring and coaching of youth baseball as well. And the honoree 1995 Class 2A is Christopher Emick of Jessup. And to present the award to Christopher, the current Iowa Bankers Association president, Bill Herbrichsmeyer, chairman of First Security Bank and Trust of Charles City, and Todd Rolfson, CEO of Farmer State Bank in Jessup. Congratulations to Christopher Emick. And our all-tournament team will be announced by Max McCausland. All during the week, members of the media have been watching the performances of these fine young athletes. Now it's time to announce the selected members to that all-tournament team. To present the certificates to them, here is our governor, the Honorable Terry E. Branstad. The first tournament member could not be with us tonight from Delhi of Maquoketa Valley, Eric Henderson. <laughs> now from Gilbert, Carl Taranez. of the team from Osage, B.J. Fleming. <laughs> the fourth member, also from Gilbert, Eric Aldhouse. And the last member, the captain from Osage, Adam Starr. There's your all tournament team. B.J. Plumbing with 31, Adam Dahl with 17 to lead Osage to a 71 to 53 win over Gilbert in the 2A championship. We'll be back at Veterans Auditorium in just a moment. Keith Mayer on the winning end of a 2A championship for the Osage Green Devils with a 71 to 53 win over the Gilbert Tigers. The native of Osage, the high school grad, comes back and coaches his team to a state title. Hope you've enjoyed this telecast of the 95 Iowa Boys State High School Basketball Tournament. Join us tomorrow night at 6.30 for the 3A and the 4A title games. Our thanks to Dick McDonald, Max McCausland, and to Tim Seaman. This is Larry Morgan saying good evening from Veterans Memorial. And welcome back. Osage beginning their official state tournament bid. <laughs> exactly. It's, uh, when you talk to the beginning of the year, I was up there beginning the season, and that's what they wanted. Their goal was to get to Des Moines. Now they're there, and uh, as you can imagine, they've set a few new goals now. Well, tonight in Des Moines, the Osage Green Devils started playing the Class 2A state tournament as the number one seed. The first game, well, it's usually the scariest, especially if you're a favorite to win. The Green Devils have calmed the fears of their fans tonight. They took care of Tri Center. Pick it up in the first quarter. Don't adjust your TV set. No, it's not snowing down there. Just some receiving problems from Des Moines. That was Kerry Colhorn with a three-pointer. He had 23. Tri-Center with the early lead. Back come the Green Devils. Jace Bisgard with the three. He had 16. 
Osage up 12 to 11. They never trailed. B.J. Fleming, he, he thinks about it, hits the three. 15 to 11, Osage after one. Second quarter, Adam Dahl blocks. John Fisk is there. He'll score 33-27. The Green Devils with the lead at the half. Fleming, this time from the top, hits another three. He had 21 points. The Green Devils were rolling. Adam Dahl then two of his eight points. More importantly, 21 rebounds for Dahl. The final, Osage 71. Rice Center of Neola, 55. So Osage moves on to the second round where they will face Maquoketa Valley. They picked up a win tonight, 72 51. That game will be on Thursday. Sure, and some other places. Adam Dahl, that's all they've talked about. Well, we know that they're more than Adam Dahl, and uh, they showed that last night. Before this season, the Osage Green Devils set a goal of reaching the state basketball tournament. Now the team's got a new goal. Osage wants a Class 2A state title. The Green Devils are one step closer after beating Tri Center of Neola last night in an opening round game. With the Trojans defense focusing on Osage leading scorer Adam Dahl inside, Jace Bisgard and B.J. Fleming picked up the offensive slack. The senior guards each hit four three-pointers and combined for 37 points. You know, Bisgard and Fleming are very, very capable shooters if people are really concentrating on Adam inside or giving somebody else, uh, trying to take somebody else away. They're both very capable of stepping up and hitting that shot. It's really never hard for me to shoot the ball. I, I mean, I put them up all the time. I probably shoot too much sometimes, but they were really covering Adam really hard down there, and he didn't, he couldn't get anything off, so left the outside wide open, and we just had to put him down. Dahl finished with eight points. That's well below his per-game average of 21.5. But the senior center was a force on the board, pulling down 21 rebounds. When one part of your game's not in there, you try to get the other parts of the game in there to help the team, whatever you can do. When they're double team me, Chase, Chase Bisgard's open all the time. And when he's hitting his three, it's really tough to stop us on outside. And PJ Fleming had a great game, too. So the Green Devils advance to the semifinals Thursday afternoon where they go up against Lakota Valley. The Wildcats are 21-3. That game Thursday, once again at 2 o'clock. Tonight in 3A in the town of Osage are putting basketball ahead of almost everything else this week and so far the luck of the Irish is carrying them. Well the Osage Green Devils are in the state tournament and the townspeople have gone wild especially impressive in this week of St. Patrick. Well today our David Kenny visited the home of the Green Devils to see if there's a cure to the basketball fever. The streets of Osage were so quiet today you could have driven a huge green barrel down the lane known as Highway 9 and no one probably would have noticed, but I did. I was there. That's because practically the whole town is in Des Moines watching the Osage Green Devils at the Big Dance, better known as the State Boys Basketball Tournament. Everybody's a little excited. When I was in uh, one of the stores this morning, they said people were starting to leave town about 5 o'clock this morning for the game, which is way early. And uh, they're a lot of fun to cover. The fans in town are just great. Uh, they get out and support the uh, athletics here in Osage uh, very well. They follow the kids in whatever they're doing, whether it be boys basketball, girls basketball. Gang Green ended their regular season with a 21-2 record and has already won the first two rounds in the state tournament. Some people here in the city of Osage believe it was the early publicity of the Green Devils boys basketball team that really drove the guys to try to achieve a state championship. But others believe it was this sign right out in front of a high school that served as a daily reminder to their basketball squad that they hadn't won a championship since 1923. I think that they can do it because they've won before and they're just a good team this year. They've been trying really hard their last two times and they've won the, the other one so I think they're going to win this one. Whether the Green Devils can break their 72-year state championship drought still hangs on the rim. But if Osage does take the state class 2A title, it may have been the support of their fans that gave them the inspiration to achieve. In Osage, David Kenny, News Channel 3. Well, Osage students have also been diagnosed with basketball fever, so they had the day off from school, but unfortunately they will have to return to class tomorrow. Now, Bob Bradovich has highlights of today's osage Makokota Valley game coming up later in sports. Well, also coming up tonight in sports, the Nia Trojans take on Alfred State of New York in the National Juco Basketball Tournament. And we have those much-awaited highlights. Do Osage fans have reason to celebrate? Bob Radovich will take us to Des Moines next. Well, we just showed you not much going on in the town of Osage. Everybody is in Des Moines. Mm -hmm. That's right, David, dropping a subtle hint as to how the Green Devils did today. Well, in Osage's first-round win over Tri-Center, the Green Devils took a lead early 
then gradually pulled away for a 16-point win. Now this afternoon in a Class 2A semifinal game with Maquoketa Valley, Osage takes control of the game from the opening tip. The Green Devils blow out to a big first half lead then hold off a late Wildcats rally for the win. We'll pick it up in the first quarter. Osage on the break. Nick Cochran to DJ Fleming for the layup. Green Devils at that point up seven. Man, it's Jace Bisgard with the steal. The senior guard will push it up court, takes it to the bucket for two more. Osage by 13. The fans are high-fiving. Coconut Valley trying to stay close. Troy Osterhaus, nice pass to Eric Henderson, but not enough. A big game for the Green Devils. Adam Dahl takes a strong move to the hoop right there, banks it in for two of his 29 points. Osage gets the win, 88-73 over Maquoketa Valley. Dahl leading the way with 29, Bisgard 16, Fisk with 15. The Green Devils will move into the 2A final game tomorrow night where they will take on Gilbert, the Tigers, an overtime winner over Sioux Center. Other action in Class 1A, the semifinal, Pomeroy Palmer returning to the title game, second year in a row, two points better than Boyd and Hall, and it's Winfield Mount Union, 66-53 over West Bend Mallard. To junior Welcome back, everyone. You can watch this game here following uh, the news, but we have it first, Osage. That's highlights. right. Now, this is a warning to everybody out there. I'm going to give away the final. I'm going to show you highlights. So if you don't want to know, if for some reason, if there are people out there who actually have not seen the game, they don't know the outcome, turn away. But I have a feeling most of the fans, especially those fans wearing green, know exactly how this one turned out. Well, Iowa first held a boys' high school basketball tournament in 1923. Osage took the crown back then and hasn't been in a championship game until last night at Vets Auditorium. Everyone's happy with throwing things. In Des Moines, the Green Devils take on Gilbert for the Class 2A title. Tigers lead 12-9 after one. Osage comes out on fire to start the second. B.J. Fleming, nice pass to Adam Dolly, lays it in. Green Devils take the lead. Then Fleming will show his range, looking at Chris Kingsbury. We <laughs> are behind the arc. He nails the three. Fans are throwing things at 32-27 at the half. Osage builds in that lead third quarter. Inside to John Fisk, another great pass by Fleming. Then Fisk, Dull. excuse me, Adam Dahl, the spin, and a bank shot. And Fleming will play catch with Adam Dahl, the two seniors having big games tonight. Fleming knocks on the three. The anchors on set are going crazy. Osage wins the tournament, 71-53. Adam Dahl, DJ Fleming named to the all-tournament team. The Class 1A championship, Winfield Mount Union takes that one over Pomeroy Palmer. In the Class 4A semifinals, West Des Moines Valley over Waterloo East, Ankeny, over Davenport North. That'll set up a final between two teams that the Mason City Mohawks both, de both defeated this year. Something like that. At the National Game is Kirk Rensler, Superintendent of Schools at Solon. We have a very dedicated group of athletic officials in our state, over 5,000 as a matter of fact, and they go out in all types of weather on a couple times a week quite often to officiate our high school contest. And as most of you probably would understand, the pay isn't that great either. Once in a while they take a little abuse, but they are very dedicated, very loyal to the sport that they officiate and to the young men and women that participate in those sports. And uh, this year we would like to induct into our officials Hall of Fame six new members. We totaled up, and uh, their total amount of service to high school athletics is over 200 years. They've been working anywhere from 25 to 35 years covering the sports of baseball, basketball, and football. So we'd like for you to meet them at this time, new inductees in our officials' Hall of Fame. And first up, from the Mon Damon area, Chuck. Adair, and he's accompanied by his wife, Marjorie. Ron Jurgens now resides in Nebraska, but used to reside in Iowa up around the Burt area and many years of officiating our high school events, and he's accompanied by his wife, Iva. From the Cedar Rapids area, we have Rich Kulbeck, accompanied by his wife, Marge. Also from the Cedar Rapids area, Lanny Peterson, accompanied by his son, Robert Novak.
From up around Rock Rapids, mainly a baseball umpire for a number of years, Larry Peterson, accompanied by his friend, Kim Pogorski. And a well-known basketball official worked in our tournament this year and has done so many times, Raleigh Schrank from Danbury, accompanied by his friend, Nancy Toit. There they are, the officials, Hall of Fame, a big hand for them for their great dedication to our high school program. <laughs> Member schools of the association every year have an opportunity to nominate a doctor from their community who has provided extraordinary service, usually not only for the athletes in his community, but those that are visiting opponents also. And we have an individual this evening who for many, many years helped the student athletes at both Carroll Public and Carroll Kemper High School, nominated by both of those schools for a 1995 Team Doctor Award. And here is the winner, Dr. Joe Martin of Carroll, accompanied by his wife, Bonnie. Each year, the Iowa High School Athletic Directors Association selects one of their own as the Athletic Director of the Year. To honor that individual this evening, we have Dan Delaney, the Athletic Director at Mason City High School, who is the current president of that organization. And next to Dan is Bob Eisenbraun of Denison, the Athletic Director there, and the current first Vice President of the Iowa Athletic Directors Association. This individual is number one in Iowa. He will go on to regional competition a bit later and hopefully win that and then go on to national competition. And by the way, we have had several Iowa winners who have won national honors. The Athletic Director of the Year, I'd like to tell you a little about him, a native of Osage. He did, he did some coaching and some teaching at various places, was in New Mexico for a period of time, but returned to Iowa in 1988 as the athletic director at City High in Iowa City. The accomplishments are too long to go into. They've been fantastic. But this one really stands out. They've had 16 state championships at City High in the last five years, and no doubt, our Athletic Director of the Year, Gary Veeam, deserves much of the credit for that great success. Gary is accompanied by his wife, Fran, our AD of the Year, Gary Veeam, City High, Iowa City. Another strong group in Iowa is our Iowa High School Baseball Association, coaches and officials. It's been a very growing organization, very strong throughout the years. They have a clinic every year, and at that time, honor some new Hall of Fame inductees into their high school baseball Hall of Fame. And we thought we'd like to give those individuals a little added exposure. So we invited them to come to our tournament this year to get a second round of applause, you might say. And to present them with certificates is Father Craig Tolleson of Carroll, who is the first past president of the Iowa Baseball Coaches Association. But these were your baseball Hall of Famers, 1995. First of all, a longtime umpire from Scranton, Larry Barr, accompanied by his wife, Gay. A coach who has accumulated over 700 high school baseball wins, Vic Belger of Creston accompanied by his wife, Pat. The late Gene Hannon coached at Bedford for some 30 years, 
had great success there, and here representing the late Gene Hannon, his wife, Barb. Coach at Ankeny for some 29 years, almost 500 wins, 1993 state championship team, Mel Merkin, Ankeny, and his wife, Vicki. Pinky Primrose has been the executive secretary of the association for a long time, but they say that his wife does a lot of the work, and we're honoring her tonight as a Hall of Famer, Flo Primrose, and she is accompanied by her husband, Pinky. And a former outstanding pitcher had a record of 36 wins, one loss, on three state championship Muscatine baseball teams, Ron Reifert, accompanied by his wife, Nancy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate your attention. Thank you very much. At time of the 2A championship game, Osage leading Gilbert by a score of 32 to 27. We'll be back at Veterans Auditorium in a moment after this pause for station identification. <laughs> <laughs> 